TNTM The Show presents... Talking Nerdy. October 2023. With your hosts, Pablo Gunner. Oh, Slay J. And the Ambassador. And we are here to talk nerdy to you about the nerdy stuff that... We've been doing lately, right? Yes. Or we've we've yeah. seen... I watched Hereditary. They set this up perfectly, right? Like, this movie was brilliant and also super messed up because you... Okay, it's called Hereditary. Okay, so it's going to be about how you pass things down to your kids because you even see in the poster there's the mom and there's the daughter, right? So you go like, oh, she's going to pass. And then even right away they go like, she sets up. Yeah, I've had mental illness in my family. A lot of my family, they've killed themselves, you know, um, and stuff. So you're like, okay, this... So you're paranoid that you have mental illness and then you pass this down to your kids and stuff. And so then it, it even plants that seed in your own head. Like, do I have mental illness in my family? Do Have I passed mental illness to my kids? Are, are they going to have, you know, are they going to be bipolar, you know, or whatever, right? So you go like, so that's a thing. And, and just the way they set up things so well in that movie, like the grandmother passes away and even at the funeral, she's like, yeah, I'm seeing a lot of people that I that I don't recognize, you know, and that's kind of weird, but, you know, thanks for coming and I appreciate that you're here to, you know, celebrate her life or whatever, right? And so you're like, okay, that's just like, you just think it's a one-off line the way that they play it off, but it's a foreshadowing moment that plays off later and you see the dots connect once you get to that point, right? But it, that one, it, pay, it takes a long time for that one line to pay off. There is something that happens early in, in the movie too and this one... And they go, the little girl, they keep on asking her, she eats like candy or she'll be eating food. And they'll, they ask her, do her, ever, not, well, everyone in her family asks her, does it have nuts in it? Does it have nuts in it? Does it have nuts in it? And she's like, no, no, no. Right? Like, so right away you go, all right, she's allergic to nuts. That's well established, right? That was super smart. And you go, boom, once again, foreshadowing. And so right away you have that dread. And, and if you have kids, you go like, oh my God, you know, like, what are my kids allergic to? And what if, you know, because they even say like, do we have an EpiPen? No, we don't. Okay, we need to get an EpiPen, you know, like, so it puts that same fear of you if you're a parent. I don't know what it does to you if you're not a parent, but still, it even did things to me as a sibling uh, later on in the movie, which, you know, like, so the, the brother, he wants to go to this party and the mom's like, take your sister, but she's way younger right and she she is a weird creepy kid and she like she does these clicks too like she goes like you know and stuff like that and it's weird and it's creepy and she's a creepy kid and she says weird creepy stuff and she writes in this book and does creepy drawings and it's weird and creepy another thing that sets up for down the road right and like i said he goes to this party and they show it and this he goes to this party and some girl's just like crushing nuts and you're like here it is. And he's like, just, he's like, just piss off. Leave me alone. I'm going to go do, you know, cause he's, he's looking to go talk to chicks. Right. And so, and do his thing. So she's off to her own devices, you know, and they're serving cake and you're like, oh my God. And, and so it sets right away. It sets right away. And so she, so she starts freaking out. He takes her to the ER right away. And they're like, he's just hauling right to the ER in this small town you know, or a hospital or whatever. And there's, and then he veers off because there's something dead. There's something dead in the road and he veers off. And the little girl, she was, she couldn't breathe. So she had her head out the window and he hits a pole and she just gets decapitated. And I was like, and he stops, right? He stops. And I started freaking out because I was like, oh my God, what if that was me as a sibling and something horrible like that happened, right? Um, because I mean, it's not to that level, but I, I've, I've hurt my brother by accident when he was younger, you know, and he was like similar, like he's like almost 10 years younger than me. And I, to this day, still feel horrible about it. And I had flashbacks of that, like that brought that back up to the surface, but then it multiplied it, right? Like times a million. Cause it's like, oh my God, what would you do? Like if you killed your sibling by accident, what would you do? And you're like, oh my God, like to me personally, I was like, I would just like, I would be like, why, why is he not killing himself? Like I would kill myself. Like I would do literally anything, drive into that same pole, 
anything, right? Like, so that I would not have to deal with the guilt of it or have to deal with my parents ever. And he, but I mean, and that's the thing is his acting was top notch. The, everyone in this movie was top notch because so like he goes home and then he parks and he just goes to bed. Now he doesn't go to sleep because he's messed up, right? Like you can't sleep after that. Who could sleep after that? And so he's just there sleepless. The mom's like, all right, I'm going to go get groceries. And she sees the bo the headless body in there and loses it. And the way that she reacted is probably the same way that I would re react if that happened to me as a parent. Because, and that I related to that and that messed that meant do this movie just continuously messed me up as it progressed. And, uh, and so then it turned into instead, like he starts hearing the clicks that his sister does. So then it changes from like this hereditary thing, like, Oh, mental illness to, Oh, this is a haunting movie now. His sister is now haunting him, right? Because then stuff starts happening to him at school and stuff, and it's creepy and it's weird. And uh, and then, like, sometimes he sees her, like, he'll see her, like, in corners of the room or whatever, and it's it's creepy. And then, but like I said, they, they plant this other seed where they put, like, a flyer into the door slot of the house, and it says seance, you know, it's something about seances, but it's a quick moment, and then they move on. And, you know, and, and the mom's going to this grief counseling meetings and stuff, and, uh, and so they, you know, even that, like she talks to this lady and this, this lady starts, that's how it goes. The lady's like, oh yeah, I can talk to my grandson, you know, I'll show you and stuff. And then the mom's like, okay, great. Now I can talk to my daughter, you know? So she gets the whole family in on it, you know, and stuff. And the dad's like, oh, I don't want to be part of this, but the son's like, okay, fine. You know, so that he gets some kind of closure. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah. So then it goes from that and then. Um, then the mom finds out that her, her mom, that her mom, the grandma, essentially, she was part of this giant cult and that this is just part of some giant scheme so that this spirit can take over the grandson and be like this cult leader. Like he's like, like a king of some level of hell or, or some, I don't know. It's, it just, and then it turns into like this cult movie, like by the, it's messed up. The movie is messed up. It's crazy. It's phenomenally well done. And that's all I have to say about that.